Good morning, everyone. I'm Carola, and welcome to the first masterclass of Eteria project. Eteria is uh, an acronym of the title Enhanced Transborder Experience Rebuild Interaction of Artists. And uh, this is uh, an international project coordinated by the Italian Center of the International Theater Institute, ITI Italy in partnership with the uh, Teatro Tsitsagintosh in uh, Greece and the National Historical and Archaeological Museum of oh, Costanza in Romania, uh, with also uh, North Macedonia Center, Center of ITI uh, from, uh, of, uh, from North Macedonia, and with uh, the Augmented and Virtual Reality Laboratory of the Department of Engineering for innovation of the University of Salento in Italy. So this project is supported by the Creative Europe program of the European Union uh, from, for the category culture uh, of the cooperation uh, projects. The aim uh, of the project is uh, to create uh, innovative uh, models in the field of social and uh, community theater and uh, uh, also uh, with the focus on uh, the conflict transformation through the performing arts based on audience engagement and intercultural artistic practices. So we have a lot of uh, uh, topics to discuss and to um, move on. Uh, one very important aspect of the project is the relation between the social theater and the technologies. And this is a very crucial topic that uh, we will develop during the residences in Costanza, uh, in Zakintosh, and uh, at the end in, in Lecce, at the end of the project. Uh, and this uh, um, experimentation between the uh, theater and the technologies is, uh, um, is uh, hallowed uh, thanks to the collaboration between uh, the artistic group and the researchers of AVR laboratory. Um, this is a work in progress experimentation that uh, we, we hope that will lead us to some important results at the end of uh, the project. Uh, for this reason, we, today, today we, we have the, the pleasure to, um, to have with us our guest uh, uh, in order to uh, conduct this, uh, this masterclass, this uh, masterclass about the technologies in the field of cultural heritage. Uh, I'm very glad to introduce Professor Andres Bustillo uh, from the University of Burgos. Uh, thanks, Professor, for accepting our invitation. Uh, just a short uh, bio, short information uh, about Professor Bustillo. He's the Associate Professor at the University of Burgos in Spain, as I was saying. He received his PhD in physics from the University of Valladolid, and uh, he has published more than uh, 45 uh, uh, JCR index articles in the last 15 years. Uh, he has been included in the last ranking of world scientists published by the University of Stanford and his teaching experience at the university in the last 15 years include different computer science topics, mainly focused in 3D animation and virtual reality. Especially, he has been uh, um, devoted to the Media Communication Bachelor, the Master in Communication and Media Development, and the Master in Media and Cultural Heritage of the University of Burgos. He has also par participated as a lecturer in the doctorate program in industrial engineering, and he coordinates five different Erasmus Plus agreements with the university all around Europe. Uh, his talks is about cultural heritage storytelling, lessons learned while using virtual reality at Burgos University. So uh, I thanks again, uh, Professor Andres Bustillo for accepting our invitation. And I ask to uh, start his masterclass and to share the, the screen. Thank you again. Thanks, uh, Professor Gato, uh, for this introduction and also to the whole Eretia project uh, for giving me the chance to, to talk or to share some ideas about, uh, let's hope, 
it works. Okay, about the uh, cultural heritage storytelling. In our case, uh, some lessons that we have learned uh, at the University of Burgos while uh, doing some research projects or some final user uh, projects in, in virtual reality. Uh, Burgos is a small city in the north of Spain, in the middle age area of, of Castilla. And uh, okay, the first uh, um, idea that I get about this presentation is uh, from the Retia partners that I have to present, or I, they would like that I present in 15 minutes uh, around um, some main ideas about immersive techniques, the vision notions of the process of building the application of this type, devices on the market, and some cases of a study uh, with some discussion. So uh, I thank the Retia partners for such a huge scope and uh, for their confidence that I will be able to, to talk about such many issues and topics in, in just 15 minutes. So in any case, I will try to do an introduction that could be a, a, a beginning for a, a discussion about how technology and especially virtual reality can be used in our case, mainly in museums, but uh, to get a cultural heritage or any kind of heritage closest to the, to the final user in in a new innovative and technological by, uh, based uh, solutions. So the, this presentation uh, will be split in four different uh, issues. First, which is the motivation to do this kind of works? Secondly, which kind of technologies do we have in the market or I mean, we can uh, take into account? Then some examples, how we learned about uh, the use of virtual reality in cultural heritage. And finally, just one slide for conclusions to, to finish my, my presentation and, and open the, the discussion. Then about our motivation, we are a group of uh, very young uh, uh, researchers, mainly or teachers. I'm the only one who are already in, in his 15, so the only old man in this, in this structure. And uh, Mainly, we are far from the museum or the excavation or whatever uh, point, academic point of view, because we work at the university. So perhaps we are a bit more closer to the point of view of the user of this application. And uh, we also have a, a different point of view because we are used at the university to evaluate our users. I mean, we have to teach and then we have to evaluate the, the final users. So um, this perhaps give us a different point of view as a traditional point of view of somebody who works in a museum or in, in an academic institution where this kind of uh, uh, ancient objects are, uh, are served or are sold. So uh, the motivation from my point of view begins a long time ago in the 1996, uh, the first time that I lived in, in Berlin, in Germany. I, I had the, the possibility to visit in, in August just after a couple of weeks after arriving there, uh, the Egyptian Museum. And at this time, the, the head of this sculpture of Nefertiti, who everybody knows, was shown in a huge room only for this uh, workpiece, just in the middle with some uh, spotlights who really focus only on this object. Then you, you can almost cross with the other visitors in the room because you cannot see almost anything but the sculpture. So for me, it was such a new kind of experience. I was <clears throat> used to uh, all these old fashioned uh, European uh, museums uh, where they are somehow like uh, warehouses with a lot of ancient objects in each room, just one after the other with some uh, small written information. And I still remember this moment when I was in front of this uh, sculpture. So uh, this opened to me one question, how could a, a cultural experience be recorded in our mind forever? Which is the difference between this way of showing uh, this sculpture, this Egyptian, sculpture and how we show uh, uh, the other other the other uh, cultural heritage object that we have how I can't forget uh, so many museums where I have visit but I cannot forget this one so <clears throat> like in a spoiler this will be uh, the result of our experience 
uh, somehow any cultural heritage item uh, should be explained in a museum or in any institution, but at the same time should be make it attractive. Uh, there is a second step that we have forgotten during the last, uh, let's say, or during the, the last century, and now in this 21th century, it makes completely compulsory to be uh, um, both to be de developed, and this is the to make the 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 or past attractive for the future. So first, uh, we begin to do projects to try to help to understand what is there. This was based in 3D reconstructions uh, to be shown in a 2D screen. I mean, uh, in the museums, like videos with uh, some kind of audio with this explanation. Uh, then the museums begin to ask for something more attractive. Uh, and then we begin to work in virtual reality uh, experiences where the immersion and the feeling of presence of the users make uh, this experience something in first person. But they still ask for something more and more. So we begin to add interaction. Interaction in virtual reality is not uh, an, easy, an easy issue. It's complex from the point of view of programming, from the point of view of using, because they are not all of the, not, the interactions that we can have in a virtual reality environment are natural. So to try to have them natural so that the people can learn them in a couple of minutes and then begin to enjoy the experience uh, is complex. And in the future, we expect to go to mixed, uh, mixed reality where we mix in extended reality both real world and this virtual virtual world this will be somehow the end of the of the presentation so coming to the <coughs> virtual reality technologies some key ideas first of all how uh, could be this uh, this 3d digital creation or recreation of the past uh, constructed or built uh, the main techniques are uh, uh, joined together in, in a word that is diga, digitalita, uh, sorry, digitalization. There we can use different techniques from photogrammetry, uh, laser scanning, or 360 degrees photogra uh, photography, depending if I, we want a 3D model or just a, two, uh, a 2D model. So uh, in any case, we should have clear that uh, digitalization record what we have now, but not something that was in the in the past. So what is this for? I mean, we already have the, the object there or the space or the, okay. In some cases, we have a limited access to these places, let's say some uh, um, prehistoric caves and then people cannot get into. Uh, or we have some ephemeral objects. We can think in Valencia in Spain, where they have uh, in spring these uh, huge sculptures that uh, made of wood uh, and paper that will fire. So if you want to remember them or to leave them again, uh, I mean, you only can visit them one week after one week before this fire in, in a spring. Or singular moments where we are doing the burial of a king or a queen, this a special moment that it will not come again. Or um, we can think now in Ukraine how, or in Morocco, how this uh, terrible uh, situation are making the, the, the cities uh, suffering or the villages. Uh, so if we want to record this moment to think in, or to remember them in the future and imagine how it was a city before it was reconstructed or rethink or whatever, uh, we need to record this, this special moment. So digitalization have, have a, a goal, it's clear. But in other cases, we don't have this uh, this uh, object buildings of space as they as they was in the moment that we went to show. So we have to create it from a lost uh, 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 cultural heritage or very transform it, or in some cases never uh, existing. Because for instance, we want to imagine how uh, the main square, this is a picture that you have there uh, of Burgos was 100 years ago, or how it will be in the future. So this different uh, situation that they are not any longer there, can only be done by other techniques. This is 3D modeling, matte painting, or we can just work on photographic retouching, or usually you can mix these techniques. So in this case, uh, there are different techniques that we can use to create or to do these virtual reconstructions. So once we have the digital um, 
uh, model created, we should move it, so we see if it uh, to virtual reality. What is virtual reality? It's somehow a new oxymoron. And it's oxymoron, if you go to the Wikipedia, I love this, this source of information. Uh, they talk is a figure of a speech that just join concepts with opposite meanings. So it's a self-contradiction it's in itself. Reality is what is truth, what really happens, while virtual is exactly what seems to be real, but is not real. So we are just joining together the two concepts that are one the opposite to the other. So what we expect from a virtual reality is somehow a representation of some scenes or images, objects or places, uh, but they are produced by the computer system that gives the sensation to be real for us. So <clears throat> we mix technology, we mix uh, virtual reality reconstruction, uh, sorry, a reconstruction of the, of the object or the space and the user and its feeling. So uh, it has, I hope the sound will not be too loud. Uh, we have uh, some advantages from virtual reality. And this is the, 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 the feeling of being there for the user. There you have uh, some students that they are working in our classes. So they are in the virtual reality environment. They feel completely free, although there is a cable there and they have some stuff. They are doing some, some kind of a task. In this case, they are related to learning about how to mount a computer. They work in an uh, autonomy way. And they also have this technological novelty of a uh, feeling that they are testing something new. So this is also attractive. So these are advantages from virtual reality that we have from the first beginning there. Uh, we have to select some uh, uh, solutions from devices. There are three ranges. I just pointed out in one slide, but I will not talk more about hardware or software means. We have from very easy solutions like cardboards where we have the a smartphone uh, implemented into a, a soft or cheap uh, uh, device. Then we have a standalone solutions like the one from Oculus now is part of Meta or, uh, from, from Facebook, or we have uh, desktop solutions like the case of uh, HTC Byte. So we have from easiest to very complex solution, neither of them are pretty expensive now. We were talking about uh, from, let's say, three euros to uh, 1,500 1, uh, euros in the, in the more expensive ones. So they begin to be affordable for many uh, institutions, depending on, 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 on the solution that, that you want. Obviously, they give different performance and they are thought for different kinds of projects. And we have also different uh, solutions from the easiest one. These are the three degrees of freedom where you move, the object will move. This means you cannot interact with the object because they are fixed at a uh, fixed uh, distance. Or the six degrees of freedom where if you move, the object will interact with you because uh, the, the distances will change. So uh, both solutions are different from the way of programming, one, the three degrees of freedom is easiest, the six degrees, <coughs> sorry, is more complex. But you see, there are solutions. Uh, and this uh, open range of solutions makes that you, you can uh, always choose which is the most uh, suitable for the project you want to, to work in. So some slides to finish with the technology so that uh, we don't get uh, deep in this issue is that obviously the advantages are related with it. They are more attractive, especially for young public. Uh, they also bring some news to the museum or to the excavation because there is some kind of update. Uh, in some cases, the museum seems to be something that is where everything is fixed. If you have this kind of solutions, the things change with the time. As then, although you don't have new objects, you have uh, the news there. It, it can increase the accessibility of the users because in many cases you have the objects in glass boxes, nobody can touch them, or they are just in caves, nobody can visit them, the real ones. So this will help the user to be there and also to understand how this object was by hands-on, by doing by themselves, they can interact with the objects. And uh, 
Finally, I want to also outline that uh, this kind of solution can provide data about the, how the user experience is. I mean, if I am a painter and uh, I have an exhibition, I would like to go to the gallery and see how the people feel when they see the, my paintings, how they, if they stay a lot, a lot of time, try to talk with them. This is how the same. I don't have to be there, but many data will be recorded by the glasses, the virtual reality glasses. And all this kind of stuff can be analyzed later on. So I can get a lot of feedback how the users are performing their experience in virtual reality. So this opens a new way of understanding this experience. But obviously there are some drawbacks. First of all, it's a costly solution, not only because the devices that I need, but also the development of the application. And usually by the use and maintenance of them, they will be cost. I mean, you need somebody to be there to help the people to begin with experiences. Uh, if they have any problem, some kind of uh, assistance. So this means money. Obviously there are some parts that are uh, complex to be included. And these are especially organic forms like humans. This will always uh, make the application more complex. But sure, there will be an obsolescence of this solution. I mean, it's something that you prepare now and in a couple of years or in three years, it will be completely old and you will have to change it. So in many cases for any investment, this kind of uh, obsolescence of these technologies uh, will be a problem. There is also a novelty effect. The people have not tested kind of uh, uh, application, so they need some time to get used to the mechanics and to the environment. So this takes its time. And I will also, to outline this, you have to get along with computer engineers. And this kind of people always uh, means a, a new point of view or completely different point of view to the, to the traditional one from a, from uh, the one who works in a museum or an artist or uh, this humanistic uh, branch of the society. So let's come to the examples to try to explain somehow all these, all these ideas. Uh, they are uh, shown in a chronological um, order. So the first project that we, that we develop was uh, for a, a museum here in Burgos where they have Enigma machine from the civil war in Spain. So the real machine was there available, uh, but the operation of this machine is complex. Uh, there are many mechanical uh, elements that should be turned, fixed, whatever. And uh, we have to say, it's not an eye-catching object. I mean, you see, it's like an old writing machine and that's all. So the people will not stop to see this, this, this machine on this box, although it have a, a very attractive or a very important uh, role in the main uh, wars during the the, the last uh, century. And obviously it was in a glass box, then it cannot be touched. So we go for a solution based in 3D modeling of the Enigma machine with uh, some high quality image textures to uh, somehow show how this uh, machine was. So I will show just yeah, some some moments of the video. This was the solution that we that we select to create a, a video with a, a very old fashioned structure where we will where we can do this uh, solution of opening the the machine and explaining how it works. Why we didn't go for just a real video because we have the machine. So a, video, a real video could be or could be a solution because we want in some cases to show how the machine was inside. So opening cables and elements, this is something that, that you cannot do. Also we saw uh, some uh, uh, old elements and try to clarify how the encrypted machine and uh, the encrypted process of the machine works. And this is complex to show without this 3D model. And also 3D models usually uh, are more attractive for young people. So these are the reason why we go for this, for this solution. So in the museum where they have is the video and the machine. Uh, for uh, let's say 10 years, the, the people just go in front of the machine or mainly nobody stop. Now the people have the screen there, the people stop, see a bit 
the video. The video is five minutes long. It's not very long. And then they go also to take a look to the to the machine. So the the the, the attraction that this object has is pretty higher now than before. And this was the goal or the main goal of this video. So the same idea uh, or very close idea was done with uh, some uh, musical instruments that were painted in the roofs of a, min a middle age a monastery uh, close to Burgos in Silo. They are on the roof and they are small, so nobody take a look to them. So uh, we prepare some videos so that the people can see that on this roof, they have some uh, middle age uh, paintings, very nice ones that they saw how the monks or the kind of uh, people of the society play the, these instruments. The solution was again, 3D modeling. In this case, we go to procedural uh, textures that uh, has the advantage to be, uh, let's say more realistic because we don't have the real instruments as we have in the in the one. And what we show is a, firstly a small presentation of the of the clusters. It's an easiest one because we want to show that on the roofs we have these paintings. So on the paintings, the elements, and then we saw the elements by themselves with some client, uh, kind of uh, explanation where they was used and so on. So we are making more attractive some cultural heritage items that are far to be uh, explained or to be attractive for the users due to the, in this case, the distance or because they are not the, the main uh, elements in this in this church. So, and the, the third example that goes for this uh, same idea are some bronze uh, pottery or cooking tools from a Roman city close to Burgos uh, in Bunien, where we have the real objects, but they were very damaged after two uh, 20 centuries. And as they are, they are no eye-catching objects. They are not attractive at all for young people. They cannot be touched at all, obviously. And in this case, we also want to introduce an open question about how was the room where these all uh, elements were uh, were uh, used. So, <clears throat> as we have the elements, we do photogrammetry, but we also want to have the elements as they were in the past for twenty uh, centuries. So we do also the pretty modeling to reconstruct these elements. Mm -hmm. You, and we prepare some videos there. Uh, here we have only some pictures, but uh, in the videos we see the element, how it was in the past, and the element, how it is shown in the uh, glass boxes in the in the museum. So the, the um, visitor can see, ah, this is the element that, uh, that I see in this, in this uh, glass box, but I also see how the element was. And later on, we also saw how the uh, room so it looks like from the information that we have from the excavation. So there is a discussion about this is the information that we have in the excavation. This is the, uh, the room as we thought it should be. So it's an open discussion between the, inform the real information that the uh, archaeologist gets from the excavation and the idea that we can make about how these people live and this element were on this warehouse, I mean, in this case, like a cook, uh, like a kitchen. So you see, these three first solutions were thought for videos. They were done, let's say, almost 10 years ago, and they tried to make more attractive uh, different objects shown in museums, in traditional museums. Then we moved to a huge room, this is a whole village, the village of Rivieska in the north of Burgos, and how it was in the fifth, uh, in the 14th century. It was the time when this village was rebuilt because it was moved from one uh, location to a new one, and it was built uh, with a very a specific uh, urbanism with a cross structure that it was not common at all in the Middle Age in Spain. So the, the town hall of the city wants to uh, make this kind of video, the first step, to show how the video, the, the, the city was, which were the main elements and so on. So as in uh, former projects, we have the same. We have a lot of information from archeological studies, and we have also the actual urbanism of the village. But 
there is no buildings at all from this time that we can use. All the villages have been have uh, suffered a strong transformation from the beginning of the Middle Age. So we wanted also to get uh, users uh, an open discussion about how the city was or the village was, the read, to read the city how it is now and was in the past. And here we try to improve or to boost the storytelling, how we understand the city, how uh, the different classes live in this village, and how they move or they interact one with the other, how the houses was of these different villages. Mm -hmm. So we do the freedom modeling and we use an image textures to build, first of all, like we do, videos. So we have a video that can be shown in the tourist office of the, of the city, can be shown in the uh, for schools where we have a presentation with some 2D images how the, the city was in this time. And then we have the 3D model of the main places. The, the main square, the main roads, how the, the, the houses was with one floor, two floors, the main buildings in this area. So it was built everything in 3D to prepare a video. And the video was explaining these main elements and the main people who live in the city and the, histo uh, the history of the village at this time, at the end of the, of the, middle, of the middle age. And this was the first step. But in a couple of years, virtual reality began to, to be a real element, a real possibility to uh, improve this storytelling, what we talk about this village. So we go for a virtual reality solution. This is a first person mm -hmm. autonomous experience mm -hmm. where the user just get into the village, visit has a, a limited way to move, he can only move and see some videos, some very short videos. It's not any longer a 20 minutes long video about the uh, history of the village, uh, but a very short videos of one minute, one uh, and a half minute. And uh, in these videos, the information was more focused, not only in historical events, but also in how the people live. So you visit the different areas of the city, where the different classes are, how these areas are, and learn from a very low interaction because you can only see videos and move yourself following a path, but you can learn more about the, the city. It's a new step in making the user a really the start, the main focus on the experience. And this is only possible with virtual reality. I mean, a video cannot give you this these autonomous ways of learning or feeling in the spirits. Uh, in the last uh, year, we have also developed uh, um, e some easy solutions like this one for showing how Burgos was uh, one year, uh, sorry, one century ago. We have a lot of pictures of how the city was, I mean, the main areas, because it was the sixth uh, uh, century anniversary of the cathedral of the city. So the town hall wants uh, to have some. 360 degrees experiences in the main square of the city, in front of the cathedral, in some main places of the city where the people with their smartphone can suddenly get involved in how the city was for 100 years. So which is the difference? First of all, we have to show this experience uh, with low cost devices, with smartphones. It will not be a free hundred. Uh, it will not be a three D experience because with a, a smartphones, uh, it was easiest to do to have a, just a two D video. But the user should get involved. <clears throat> so to have a stronger interaction with the video, we decide to go for some actors, some real people who will bet, uh, get involved or include in these videos, will explain how their lives, go, their lives goes, why they were in the city of Burgos, because they come from a small village of the, of the province of Burgos, to visit the cathedral, because in this year there was a lot of events. So these people begin to speak and to tell how the city was. So it's a different way to get the user involved, because there are some actors who are talking to them. So. In the first experience, in the one from Ibiesca, you get involved because you move in the city, 
In this case, you are in the real place, you are in, the, in front of the Cathedral of Burgos, and you see how it was for 100 years, and people from this time explains to you how the city was. So uh, you have the resolution, I will not get involved. Uh, or get explain it because I don't think technology is the most important thing. So these are the videos, you can see them in YouTube. Uh, the main problem here is that we cannot move just around because uh, we don't have the accelerometers of the smartphone to, to move on, but we have elements moving from cars, people, users, and this makes uh, people feel just, just imagine that the people are really standing on the main square of the city, and then they see how the, the this square was and how the people move at this time. So again, it's a virtual reconstruction. And the last project that I want to present is the one who are, we are developing uh, uh, now and in the last uh, three years, and this is the uh, virtual reconstruction of the Cathedral of Vitoria. Vitoria is one of the uh, capital cities in, in the Basque country, in the north of Spain. And in this case, uh, the, the town hall, or I mean, or the responsible of the cathedral want to show to the people how uh, the cathedral have changed during the Middle Age. So the main issue is that the, there is a lot of historical and archaeological studies about how the cathedral was. We have a strong support of the, the archaeologists working there. But I mean, the space, the cathedral is hard to be recognized and the whole city because it has changed a lot from the beginning of the, of the Middle Age. So uh, the solution that we go for is uh, 360 degrees virtual reconstruction. So in some cases, it's a, a, a 3D solution because they will be shown with a high uh, or medium let's say a standard virtual reality glasses, not cardboards like the, oh sorry, or smartphones like the solution in Burgos. So the people have the feeling to be in a 3D environment, but these elements, these sort experiences will be included in a, a supported a visit a guided by a real person. So the real person will explain the cathedral. And in some places, the users, the visitors, will just wear the glasses and see how this room was, <clears throat> this space was for uh, 600 years uh, or six centuries. So they will see the room, the space, uh, how it was changing, but they will see also some actors uh, playing in this room and explaining some elements. Mainly there is no interaction with these actors. They will not explain to the <laughs> to the visitor because you have a guide uh, who is explaining you the same the same the same space so it's a a, a, a communication between a, a real person and the virtual reality environment so for instance this will be this will be a, obviously it's in 2d a, an explanation how the city of a, a, of a, Victoria was at the first beginning of the Middle Age. It was uh, almost a, a very small village because mainly by the Basque Country was developed at the end of the Middle Age and in, in, in other times. So you see almost uh, this small village is Victoria at this time. But actors are there just trying to give a more real uh, uh, experience for you. So although there is no interaction with the use. And one of the moments just visiting the cathedral, this is how the cathedral is. So in the first seconds, the people see how the cathedral is now, where they are. And once the, the guide have explained this room, they will go to the past. This, uh, this, uh, this same space goes to, as it was at the end of the Middle Age when this room was beginning to be built. So in this case, they are uh, in the, in the, on the floor of the cathedral on the main area, the altar, but then later they will go to the roofs and in the roofs, they will see also how this area was constructing, which kind of people were working. I don't know if we have in this video now, in the other. So the main uh, architects, the main uh, 
elements that were working in this. And you see, some spheres are virtual reality are costly ones, others are very cheap, let's say with smartphones, other are just videos, but all of them try to move from an object, an ancient object, with a strong transformation or without almost no transformation or without almost object because it have changed a lot to a new one where the people, the visitor, the student can get involved in the experience with a higher level of involvement, certain one. I mean, we have not uh, shown here serious games, uh, but this is another level of interaction. But I think this first level for cultural heritage could be could be interesting. So a last slide to finish with my presentation. Sorry, uh, because but sure I am <laughs> out of my 15 minutes. Uh, there is a lot of words about technology, VR, uh, three degrees of freedom, six degrees of freedom, stand alone, uh, photogrammetry, modeling, many computer techniques. All of them try to create historical reconstructions, whether for videos, for pictures, or for virtual reality and interactive environments. Uh, so there is always a, a nice solution, a costly, reasonable one, depending on the project. But it's necessary to take into account which are the goals of the project. What do we want to communicate uh, to select the right uh, capacities of the to find the best solution for this? And thanks a lot for the for the attention. I hope this will be interesting and can open a, a discussion about these this kind of new technological solutions for cultural heritage storytelling. Thanks a lot, Professor Bustillo, for your very inspiring uh, presentation. Thanks for showing us many different projects uh, and that give us the possibility to also to imagine our uh, future work. Um, of course, uh, we are focusing now on the goals of the project. Uh, so we are looking for the best solution uh, according to uh, the, the, the possibilities that uh, the technologies uh, provide now in, uh, to us. So thanks again. Uh, I think that we can collect the question, uh, but first uh, uh, we can stop the streaming and start the discussion, the discussion uh, phase after that. So thank you. Thanks to you, Carola. I'm sorry again for the for the almost half an or oh, longer than half an hour that I have take to do the presentation. <laughs>